What's up guys? So, um, I now have cold water and I have hot water in my brewery. Stick around and uh, see how I did that. Hey guys, for what I'm doing right here is I am looking to see where there's a stud in the wall because I want to avoid drilling into a stud at all costs. I'm basically my goal is to drill straight through the wall and um, run my PEX tubing through the wall. So I'm just measuring up how far up I want it to go and then I'm going to measure how far over I want it to go and then I will take those measurements and go to the outside and find about the same placement and drill my hole. So that's what I'm doing right here on this part. So then we take it outside. I take my drill, because I've already figured out where that is, and I'll go ahead and drill the hole. Just simply drill right through. There's that uh, foam insulation in the wall, and I did have a little problem with my chuck there because I didn't have it set to drill mode, but I do adjust it and I continue forward. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just drilling out the wall with a uh, decent size hole saw drill bit and uh, it took me a little time but I did make it through and I did not hit any wood so that was good other than just the outside wood <laughs> so there's that next I take the PEX tubing and I slide it through the new hole that I drilled all the way through to the inside and here I have a um, stub out slide on piece here that I actually found on Amazon and it's really cool because if you have PEX tubing you can kind of slide that over like a sleeve and it creates a stub out for you in the wall and uh, what I'm doing here is I'm going ahead and marking where the screw holes will be so I can do my drilling uh, to put in the wall anchors next I'm drilling out the holes for the uh, wall anchors that X is where the stud is. <laughs> All right, after I do that, then I come back and I hammer in the anchors. That one gave me a little trouble, but I was able to get it in there. I didn't want to drill the holes too big and then the anchors would be loose. So I wanted to make sure they were a tight fit in the wall. So after I get that one in, the other one actually goes in pretty easy after this one. All right, next is uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, little collar on that we screw to the wall. This is just a chrome plated piece of plastic really. It's not metal or anything, but it did the job just fine for what I needed. And uh, so I'm just securing that to the wall. And just double checking the, uh, how well it's fastened to the wall. I still had a little jiggle there, so I gave it a little bit more uh, tightening. And that's all, that solidified basically a nice solid uh, install so then there's this little decorative plate that just goes on and you just twist it on and it locks in place now the next thing I use is this shark bite um, valve it's got two outlets on it so I, what I was wanting to do is split the cold water line two ways one way is going to go to the little four gallon water heater that I bought and the other cold line is going to go straight to the cold water input on the uh, sink out, uh, faucet. And that's just a little decorative collar spacer that I'm snapping on there. 
and it's just shark bite so all you do is just push it on the tubing and it locks in place bites down now here I'm measuring about an inch and a half out because the shark bite depth so that's probably about an inch probably an inch and a half I can't remember but uh, the shark bites bite down so deep and I was trying to precisely measure exactly where I wanted that shark bite to stop and so I'm just using some regular plumbing cutters here and I'm trying to make sure it's perfectly straight up and down um, and that cut easily very easily with the plumbing cutters and then here I'm just putting an elbow piece on so I can run um, it's another shark bite elbow and I'm just putting it on to run it uh, upwards so I can add another piece of tubing there and that's going to go up to the spigot the very very easy install you basically just push the tubing down inside and it, it grabs and locks on with like a, a, a ring fitting inside the shark bite piece and here I'm just cutting it to the right length for the faucet And there's the, uh, what I ended up doing here is I, I bought a shark bite uh, water spigot and it doesn't have a counter flow on it so I can actually run water into it, not just out of it. So what I was looking for was a design where I could uh, run water in and just like open up the valve on the spigot and then water would flow inward into it. And so now I'm putting a piece of wood behind there because I want to have a piece that sticks out enough so it's even with the elbow and uh, the faucet can fasten to that. So what I did is I took a level, I put some double-sided sticky tape on the back side of that wood block because I wanted this thing to be level and then once it was level I just wanted to push down and the tape would hold it in place until I fastened it down with screws. So here I am using some deck screws actually for this and I'm just fastening that piece of wood onto the shed. Now I'm just doing a bead of caulk all the way around where the block meets the shed to keep any water intrusion from getting behind that piece of wood. And it'll create a very seamless look to the shed by having that smooth bead of caulk around that piece of block. And next I just went out and smoothed it down with my finger just to kind of make it look a real nice smooth transition between the wood block and the shed. Then I go back and I put some caulk over the screw head so they don't rust or anything. They are uh, coated in a protective material but I wanted to go ahead and put some caulk over them anyways and just kind of flatten that out and smooth over top of them. Kind of act as a protectant. Then I found some, uh, well I didn't find, I had some paint from when I had painted the shed. So this is just some Sherwin-Williams paint that I had left over from when I actually painted the shed. So I'm just painting it to match. I did allow the caulk to dry for about 20 minutes before doing this. It was a quick dry caulk. And I did about three coats of paint on this wood block so that it looked uniform with the shed. Then I had fastened the spigot on there, it was just two screws. I didn't, I thought I had filmed that piece, but I, I lost that footage, so I just, you know, had filmed it being fastened on. 
Now what I'm doing here is I'm looking for uh, where the joist is in the floor because I did not want to drill the drain hole uh, through the joist. And so I found a sweet spot over in that area right there. And so that will be where my sewage line goes out. So I end up marking it with a Sharpie and I found it. I was happy with that spot. Next I'm taking a hole saw, I think it's a one and a half inch hole saw and I'm drilling out the hole for through the floor and through my flooring all the way through. Now I have a perfectly cut hole as you can see straight to the bottom. I'm moving my sink into place to kind of align it with the hole. I did use an S trap for this because I did not want to run the pipe through the walls. I'd rather have ran it straight down and under the shed and out. And this uh, sewer pipe is actually just uh, running out to the side of the shed and into like a uh, like runoff area on the side of my shed. Um, but there I am. Uh, I had already ran the pipe underneath and up and I used a uh, fastener to hold it in place. And that's why I'm able to let that pipe just sit there like that. Now I'm figuring um, that I'm going to need to cut the straight pipe coming from the sink a little bit because it's too long at the moment but I want to meet up perfectly as you can see here I noticed that uh, that pipe is just too long so I'm eyeballing it there I've got my sharpie and um, you'll see here in a minute that I, I mark it with the sharpie so I know where to cut it So I'm like, okay, I need to have a little bit of overhang. So I go ahead and cut it just enough so that it inserts into the pipe without an issue. I look at it again and say, like, oh, maybe I need to go just a little bit higher. So that's why I marked the second mark. And that's where I actually end up cutting the pipe. So I take it off the sink. I go outside. I take my hacksaw and I cut that line. I just saw that piece off. Voila. I go back in, I reattach it to the sink, and just kind of end up tightening the uh, actual drain itself on the sink because I noticed it was a little loose, so I'm just kind of fine-tuning the tightness there on the sink and the drain pipe. Good and snug, and then I'm like, oh, okay, so I need to, uh, I ended up taking it off and then putting it back together as you can see right there. And now everything's connected pretty much and just kind of tightening down all the rings. This plumbing is so easy guys. Um, it's just basically snap together plumbing. I mean most of your plumbing these days is just this plastic twist together stuff and anybody can do it. It's real easy. And they have these little gaskets that seal up against the pipe so there's no leaks on the inside of the pipe. And there it is. That's just a flange, a decorative flange I bought to put at the bottom. I do fasten it to the floor to hold it in place. It just gives it a nice decorative look. And I do go back later under the shed and I use some expanding foam on the underside of that flange to kind of fill in any gaps and voids and around that hole that I made I just I just fill all around that with some expanding foam underneath the shed so that no critters or anything can come in and it keeps the AC inside and doesn't seep anywhere but that's it for the drain real simple next step here is I'm setting up the water heater this is a Camplux water heater I bought on Amazon I think I paid hundred and fifty dollars for it if I remember correctly it's a four gallon water heater it's great for this application because I need just enough hot water to wash um, my brewing equipment um, I could use the kettle to heat the water up but I'd rather just save that hot water and, and use 
I'd rather just save the wear and tear on my element and just use a, a pump, a dedicated hot water source. So that's what I'm doing here. I got some uh, plumber's protectant thread sealant. I'm putting it on this pressure relief valve. This is uh, in case too much pressure builds up in the water heater, this valve will go off and spray water out of the valve. You're supposed to connect this uh, pressure relief valve output to your drain. I do not do that. <laughs> so I'm taking the risk of uh, flooding my shed one day if that thing ever did decide to fail or not really fail, it would do its job and let the excess pressure off. But uh, I'll take my chances. My floor is uh, fairly waterproof. It's a vinyl floor. So here I am just kind of snugging it down. Um, I snug it down by hand and then I take my wrench and I kind of give it a little extra tightening. Not too tight though because I didn't want to strip anything and these delicate plastic parts on this uh, water heater have to be very careful. So I do it till I feel like the resistance is just enough and then I back off of it. Snugging it down so it's turned the other direction one more time. And now I'm putting on the uh, protective thread seal for the water, uh, hot water output. And I'm putting a, uh, a little on off shut off valve there um, to connect to the hot water line that runs to the sink faucet. I hand tighten that. Like I said, this is a, these are plastic fittings that I'm screwing these metal fittings onto, so I'm being very careful not to strip them. And so next step I'm doing is I'm going on and uh, putting some thread tape on the cold water input to the water heater. And then I have a supply hose. I'm just going to screw the large end on there and then uh, the other end will connect to the hot water or the other end will connect to the cold water output of my split um, water supply connector um, that you saw me hook to the PEX tubing earlier in this video. And there it is. All connected there. So now we just need to slide the water heater in place. You can mount this water heater on the wall. I chose not to. I just chose to have it sit on the floor back underneath my table. I'm connecting the uh, water supply line here that runs to the water heater. This is the off of the cold splitter there. And that was actually the uh, cold water running to the faucet. This line is running to the water heater right here. And then that's the hot water line right there that I'm running. So I end up do I do end up moving the water heater a little further left, so there's a little more slack in the line, and I'm just kind of snugging it down with a wrench, so we don't have any leaks. So that's it. I now have running hot water and cold water in the brewery to wash things. The water just drains and runs right outside to the yard. Like I got a little sump area that I'm gonna put. It's not a sump area, I should say. It's just more like a little area to collect that water and just let it break down out there. 
like I said, I'm not putting anything down the drain that should be put down like a sewer line. I'm just putting like organic items like hops and grain and yeast, those kind of things. I won't ever do any like barbecue stuff down the drain or anything. So anyways, I'm excited to use this. Um, I'm using, um, well I haven't picked them up yet, I just test drove all this with uh, regular water hoses. I am going to get some RV water hoses and use those instead because I want to be able to drink the water if I wanted to. And I'm also planning on using this water to brew with. So I want to make sure that I use water or drinking water safe hoses to get the water from my house to the uh, brewery. And also the water, the water coming out of my tap is soft water already. It gets ran through the carbon scrubber and everything just everything on my house runs through the softener and carbon scrubber. So it's good drinking water. Um, it's not hard water or untreated water like, you know, like most water hose lines are. And when I was a kid, we drank from the water hose all the time anyways, right? We didn't care, but now things are different. But anyways, thanks for watching my video. If you haven't, hit the subscribe button, give a thumbs up, and I hope my solution to getting water that doesn't require inspections and code and all that, and you just need to get it out here to use once in a while, I hope somebody finds this useful and gives them some ideas. Those shark bite um, plumbing parts are amazing. All you do is press and they hold and they clamp on and, and you don't have to be a plumber to do all this stuff. It's real simple. And it's uh, for the under part here, I still have to uh, get some expanding foam and expanding foam that drain hole that I created in the floor uh, just to keep the critters out and keep the cool air in the shed. And uh, next project's gonna be getting something on these doors so that they look a little more uh, rustic or so. so. Anyways guys, thanks for listening to this little ramble and watching the video. Cheers.